Hi, Minstel here. Before starting the Legacy League, it's good to refresh your memory of the Legacy mods. To milk the League mods to their maximum value, you need knowledge. In this video, I'll share my knowledge for the Talisman League mod. So why Talisman? Well, it's been out of the game for a long time. It has not been implemented to the core game like Essence and Prophecy League. So all that knowledge has dropped a little. And the devil is in the details for this one. The potential for good gear is high, so Talisman deserves your attention. Talismans can be equipped in the amulet slot so the League gives access to crazy good amulets. And the League contains one-handed unique weapons that will be buffed across the board in 2.6. Examples of overpowered Talisman League combos can be, but not limited to, Breach League Intelligence Claws in combination with Int Heavy Talismans. Facebreaker unarmed builds in combination with the unique talisman that converts claw statistics into unarmed. Fire resist builds can reach above 95% resistances to fire. With a unique talisman called Eyes of the Great Wolf, you could potentially become immune to a second element. The potential of combining existing builds with talisman goes through the roof, let alone undiscovered use of talisman league items. In this video, I'll start with the Talisman basics and finish off with the implications of the Legacy League Stones. These League Stones are used to activate the League mod in the new Legacy League. The Talisman basics are Monsters walk around with Talisman amulets, similar to possessed spirits. They get buffed by the Talisman, enabling special skills and they drop the amulet when slain. Dropped amulets can be picked up by monsters, so normally you'd run in fast to grab it before another monster picks it up. There can also be reasons to drop a talisman on purpose for a monster to pick it up. To make it spawn adds for example. A player killing these talisman adds would generate on kill effects and or flash charges. This trick can trivialize some long and hard boss fights. Talisman amulets have tiers, with many different bases having their own unique implicit mod. These special implicit mods have the potential of making great amulets. When you encounter talisman monsters, they drop a tier 1 talisman. There are 4 tiers of talismans. You can upgrade talismans by using a stone altar, a stone circle. By manually putting 5 different talismans into the altar, they can spawn a monster. 5 different, so you cannot put duplicate bases in the altar. The spawned monster carries the upgraded talisman. So by sacrificing 5 tier 1, the result will yield a monster carrying 1 tier 2 talisman. In this video you see me doing the process for the very first time. I was a little confused, but the loot was a Twins Avian Talisman, a tier 2 talisman. The big bad wolf called Rigvald is the end boss of all talismans. You can spawn his instance with a set of 5 tier 3 amulets. And he will drop the maximum tier talisman, a tier 4. It's a hard boss, so to make sure you have enough tries to kill him, you can use a stone circle outside of maps, in Dried Lake for example, so you're not limited to 6 map portals. Tier 4 amulets have 2 random talisman implicit modifiers, so their potential is through the roof. Rigvald has his own loot table containing these uniques, a ring, a quiver and 2 weapons. The loot table is dependent on the level of the Rigvald instance and the Rigvald instance is determined by the item level of the sacrifice talismans. The formula used for the calculations takes different item levels of talismans into account, where the highest amulet has a bigger influence on the result. The highest amulet is calculated 3 times, the middle amulets are calculated 2 times and the lowest amulet is calculated only 1 time. The final result is rounded up. That means for the possible maximum end boss result you need a level 75 instance to get all the possible loot. And that requires the calculation to end up on 74.5. That means you can still use lower level amulets and upgrade them accordingly. Of course the higher the item level of the instance the better potential for rare tier 4 talismans. There's no reason for you to stop at 74.5, you can aim higher to the maximum of 84. So to make efficient use of your amulets it's worthwhile to tweak. So if the formula ends up with 80.2 you might want to swap in some lower level amulet and run the instance at level 79.5. The end result will be the same with inferior resources used. Let's do one example. 5 talisman 
with the item level of 81, 76, 75, 74 and the low one picked up during leveling of 54 will yield you a level 75 instance. At first I was using a spreadsheet for the calculations but after a week or so into the league I was doing this by head. Only counting the difference between the item level and the result needed, 74.5. So to make efficient use of a stone altar, you gotta have options and that means a tab filled with talismans. So you will always have choices. Trading talisman amulet to create sets is a fine solution as well, but remember the importance of item level. There are also unique talismans. The tier 1 unique talisman is called Knight's Hold. It's an exceptionally good leveling item. Since plus 2 level and level 10 added chaos on a character of level 10 counts for a lot. Added chaos adds roughly 50 to 80 extra damage to a skill, whereas spells on level 10 usually do like 25 damage. Spell gems are blue and have to match the socket in the talisman. And since they're always corrupted, you need a level 8 for Richie to change the colors. So that's not going to happen start league. The tricky part is the cast when stunned mod. That means you cannot manually cast spells linked to that. However, traps, totems, mines, attacks and channel skills cannot be supported by cast when stunned, so those skills can be used manually. Channel spells like lightning tendrils or flame blast or totems like flame totem and shockwave totem or mines like fire nova or a trap like fire trap can be used normally. A tabula rasha with full array on jewelry and weapons will be better for leveling. But hey, this is just one level 10 amulet that will skyrocket you to level 40. Not bad, not bad at all. The tier 2 unique amulets were Reekveld's Curse for the softcore league and Blightwell for the hardcore league. I'm assuming in the legacy league they will both be available for both leagues. Facebreaker is the unarmed enabling unique and pretty good, and so as a consequence Reekveld's Curse is awesome too. Since these talismans are tier 2, they can only drop with the stone circle mechanic. The rarity is determined by one of the talismans that was sacrificed in the stone altar, and that talisman is chosen randomly among the 5. So the chance of creating a unique tier 2 talisman is only 20%. On average you'll have to sacrifice 5 tier 1 Nighthold unique amulets to get a unique tier 2. The bases sacrificed have to be different, so you cannot put in 5 Nightholds for a 100% chance. That's why this unique talisman upgrading business is risky business, especially considering you have to run another 20% chance to get from unique tier 2 to unique tier 3 and another 20% chance to get up another tier to tier 4. To get a single tier 4 unique amulet, you'll be requiring a lot of unique amulets to sacrifice. So on average you'll be using 5 times 5 times 5 results in 125 Nighthold unique talismans. This is risky and costly business, not to be underestimated. Finding all those Nighthold talismans is impossible, so you have to buy them. Some people might be confused by the Nighthold talisman. They cannot use their spells manually because of the cast when stunt mod. Hence they will sell them cheap without knowing their full potential. Always st stay on the lookout for underpriced unique amulets. So just like unique talismans, rare talismans can be very good as well. The upgrading process uses altar stones and follows the same rarity process as mentioned earlier. When you're using a stone altar and you sacrifice three rare amulets, one magic and one white, you'll have a 60% chance you're going to end up with a rare amulet. So by using white and magic talismans, you incorporate the chance you are destroying your project's potential. All that work to create a silly white rarity tier 4 amulet. That's crazy. There is a mitigating factor though, and that is the labyrinth special altar called a mysterious dark shrine. Lead turns to gold. An unequipped white item in your inventory is turned into a rare. White talismans can become valuable, if you wait long enough for a labyrinth with this very very rare Dark Shrine spawn. In conclusion, the process of upgrading your talismans require a lot of dedication. The farming needed to open a rig vault and boss instance will be extensive. Now, let's take a look at the leak stones and their implication on the talisman base mechanics. Here you see a screenshot of leak stones that enable the talisman leak. They all have the implicit mod next area will contain a monster possessed by a talisman, so each leak stone will yield you at least one talisman. 
I've not seen any rare leak stones, so I'm going to assume the maximum rarity is magic. And as all magic items, they have a prefix and a suffix. Two pools with modifiers. On the first stone, we see a prefix. The next area contains a stone circle. If this mod is rare, you only want to be using this leak stone when you have saved up a full set of five different talismans of the same tier. That's obvious. It has the suffix that reads, talismans found in the next area will be rare. Now that's interesting. You'd rather have rare talismans than white and magic talismans. So when you activate the stone circle, this might override the randomly chosen rarity. So back to the earlier picture. When using this leak stone, you have a 100% chance to create a rare talisman. So it would be a waste to invest rare talismans into the stone altar. You would be better off using only white and magic talismans to upgrade them into rare. This might also override your chance of gaining a unique talisman, so never try upgrading uniques with this leak stone. Another prefix reads, next area will contain two additional monsters with a talisman. This would be the perfect stone to start your grind in the league with. Another suffix reads, talisman found in the next area will be one tier higher. Now here things become really interesting. This leak stone will yield you 3 tier 2 talismans, the equivalent of 15 tier 1 talismans. Since a tier 2 talisman is created by a set of 5 tier 1 talismans, so 3 times 5 is 15. That's a huge huge upgrade comparing to a leak stone yielding you just 1 tier 1 talisman. I'm assuming the upgrade will only count from the instance talismans, and not the ones you manually bring into the instance and drop on the floor for monsters to be picked up. That would be a silly exploit. Leak challenges have announced there's a vendor recipe for leak stones. If you can somehow improve your chances of getting this mod, it would enhance your talisman farming by a crazy amount. Now let's make a leak stone ourselves. From the prefixes I choose a stone circle, and from the suffixes I choose the plus one tier. Now this would be crazy. If I would use a set of tier 2 amulets in the circle, they would yield me a tier 4 amulet. That's a huge, huge deal. Instead of paying the equivalent of 125 tier 1 amulets to gain 1 tier 4, I would pay only 25 tier 1 talismans, saving me a whopping 100 talismans. A perfect way to upgrade unique talismans where the cost is high of course. Look at this old picture of upgrading unique amulets to tier 4, requiring 125 unique tier 1 talismans on average. Now you can skip the tier 3 amulet step, saving you 100 Nightholds amulets. To milk this specific leak stone to the maximum, you could possibly even use two unique tier 2 talismans for a 40% chance to get Eyes of the Great Wolf. This does skip the Reek Vault instance though, so you won't get the boss drops. But this will save a huge, huge amount of time and resources. So milking the leak stone mods to their maximum value is vital for the talisman mods. Knowing what stones are the jackpot is key and buy them from players who do not see their value. This homemade fictional leak stone is worth its weight in gold. In conclusion, in order to farm talisman effectively you need options, both in the leak stones and in the talismans to create optimal sets. So I can advise you to save up your talismans for end game, to ensure they all have decent item level to spawn the appropriate rig vault and boss instance, and to milk the jackpot talisman league stone to the maximum value. Well, that was it for now. Good luck in your legacy league and thanks for watching.